What's going on, everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller, here with another installment of T3 Off the Cuff, your one-stop shop for daily orology news. Now, today we're going to be talking about something that pretty much every collector in every hobby pays attention to, um, pricing and trends within the market. Are prices going down? Are prices going up? Well, in this economy... Prices are going up, right? That, that's kind of to be expected. Uh, but before we get into any of this, you already know what to do. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notified when we upload because we upload at least once a day on this channel. And go ahead, follow me on Instagram at The Simple Consultant. You can see a lot of all the other projects I'm working on outside of just watches and become a channel member. You know, $4.99 a month is like the price of a cup of coffee nowadays. All right, and you support me, you get some extra content, you get the access to the members only Discord. Why not? All right, let's tell the time. Let's talk about price increases in the luxury watch market. It is 2.47 p.m. Let's get down to business. I'm not wearing a luxury watch. I am wearing one of the least expensive watches I own. I wear this uh, most days, actually. Um, this, like, $42 watch is on my wrist, and I absolutely love it. Um, okay, so... Shout out to Monochrome Watches. Uh, they have a very nice chart here um, going from February 2022 to June 2023. There are clearly some new players here uh, in the June category. We're going to talk about the pricing, but then I'm going to bring up a like bigger issue. All right. So right now, uh, the U.S. inflation rate is like... 4.05%. I looked it up this morning. In Switzerland, it's 2.8%. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, uh, inflation is what it is. And um, most things are going to cost more money than they used to. Okay, whatever. Uh, at least it's not like the like 11% that it was, right? Or whatever. Maybe it is. And everyone's just lying to us. Who knows? Who cares? Um, anyway, we're looking at certain watches, uh, in 2022, the Tissot PRX P80 was, uh, 645 bucks, June, 2023, 675, and the CHF is, they're not bucks, they're Swiss francs, but I'm probably going to end up saying bucks a bunch uh, of times in this episode, so I apologize. Uh, then we can go ahead and look at... Uh, watches, let's see, uh, there was a specific one that I wanted to bring up, and I want to make sure that it's on both, uh, lists. Oh, well, I mean, why not? The AP Royal Oak, right? Back in 2022, 29,700 Swiss francs. And then in, uh, 2023, we are looking at 31,300 Swiss francs. Uh, the... <laughs> Chapek, the Sapek, I've heard it pronounced a ton of different ways, um, 21,000 Swiss francs, uh, up a measly 1,000 Swiss francs to 22,000 Swiss francs. Um, we're seeing, what's interesting is this uh, Sport Auto from Le Vent Ferrier uh, seems to be the same price, and I, I, I don't know why. I can't, I can't explain that, but whatever. Um, 19,600 Swiss francs for the Breguet Marine. Uh, and then um, this year up to 20,500 Swiss francs. Um, so things are going up uh, in the Breguet market. The Girard Pergo Lariato, 12,800 this year. 13,700. Now, we can see that the the average price uh, of the luxury watch market is going up an average of like 5%. Um, but there's like an overarching issue that like I see here, all right? And it's not the pricing. Can anyone guess? I'm going to give you uh, 10 seconds. And, and you know what? I'm actually going to time it. Guess. Uh, what the bigger issue is here. Comment it in the comment section below. Seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Did you get it? That's right. All of these are the same watch. <laughs> I know. Uh, I mentioned a bunch of different brands, and uh, you can see a few different dial colors, kind of. But actually, these are all the same watch. Um, and there are some watches that I like on this list, actually. You know, there's uh, the overseas, the Vacheron Constantin overseas, the Lariato. I actually really like. Uh, let's see on on um, uh, the the Laurent Ferrier Sport Auto. That's that's actually Laurent Ferrier is one of my favorite uh, watchmakers, believe it or not. Um, there's even a uh, Cartier Santos on the list. So there are some watches I like, but when we look at it, uh, these are all the same watch. Integrated bracelet, mostly blue dials, like a lot of different hues of blue. Um, it's like th this should have been the bigger issue. I love monochrome, by the way. And they actually even in this article, um, let's see who wrote it. Shout out. Xavier, um, we can see, uh, he said, few watch categories have seen such a surge in popularity as the luxury sports watch parentheses or integrated watch design. Um, yeah, so, so they kind of call it out, but the truth is like the bigger issue isn't the 5% price increase. It's that like all of these luxury sports watches are just the same watch and it's boring. And this is uh, laziness within the watch market. You know, I want to see innovation. I want to see watchmakers try something new. I want to see risks taken. And I get it. Uh, that is, well, by definition, risky. Um, a lot of watchmakers would rather uh, go, um, you know, ease of movement, uh, path of least resistance, uh, they want to bring a product out to market that has some proof of concept. So a blue dial integrated bracelet, um, flat bezel design, that's what sells. We're going to produce that and make some money, right? We're a business at the end of the day. But that doesn't excite me as a hobbyist in this field. You know, um, we as enthusiasts, we look at things a little bit different. We don't necessarily look necessarily, excuse me, look at this as a business. And guess what? I'm in the watch business. I sell watches. And still, uh, I, I'm, I'm a watch lover at heart. And, and the love and interest and enthusiasm that I get as an enthusiast in this hobby, um, it kind of transcends the business aspect. I still want to see new things. I want to see fun things. I want to see risks. I want to see innovation. And I know that there's going to be some people in the comment section that's like, oh, there's, you know only so many ways to skin a cat and you really uh like how many different ways can you reasonably design a watch actually well, come on i mean we see it all the time there's some really awesome watches out there and i guess all of this is somewhat subjective right beauty is in the bo is beauty is in the eye of the beholder excuse me but you already know where i stand on this and i'm actually very happy that monochrome wrote this editorial and that at least admitted the surge in popularity here without mentioning how <sighs> drawn out and overplayed and boring this design language is. I'm hoping that sooner than later we can kind of transition into a uh, more interesting era of watch design. But right now, um, you know, everybody complained about the quartz crisis killing off uh, certain watchmakers and and bringing out dastardly designs. I think the quartz crisis was one of the coolest freaking eras in watchmaking. Um, this is the dark age. This is a dark age in watchmaking. You can blame it on the economy. You can blame it on uh, popularity and, and 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 trend shifts. We need to shift away from this trend big time. So let me know what you think about this. Is the 5% price increase really that shocking uh, when, you know, U.S. inflation is hovering around 5%, sometimes exce well exceeding 5%? Um, no, it's, it's not surprising at all. What is surprising, though, is this just crazy example 
of, of all these watches here in one place before us, all looking the exact same. And uh, Turtle has been here the whole time. Please like, comment, and subscribe <laughs> for my little baby turtle worm. Look at her. So chunky and delicious. All right, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. All right, guys. Love ya. Peace!